Alright, here we are again, and in this video we're going to be looking at a brief introduction to the ASC7 uh, snow load provisions. So obviously this does not apply everywhere in the country and around the world, um, well ASC usually only applies in the US primarily, but um, so obviously there are parts of the country that do not experience substantial snow load. Um, if you're uh, watching out in Honolulu or something, then you may want to ignore this particular video unless you're just particularly curious. But um, well, at least as uh, maybe a uh, hundred years from now, we won't have snow in the U.S. anymore. Oh God, something, something, climate change, something, something. <laughs> but for now, um, we do have to consider snow load. So these are all found, all of these provisions are found in Chapter Seven of the ASC Seven, ASC Seven Sixteen or later editions. And I'm just going to walk through uh, first the basic procedures um, dealing with a single. Uh, basically, what I want to cover in this video is looking at flat roofs and mono slope roofs. Those are roofs which is a single slope um, without any complex geometries and without considering drifting, uh, etc. I want to look at just the simple uh, basic procedures and then I may in a follow-up video, in a follow-up video I may put out some um, complex, uh, put, put, put out some examples of drifting and some other considerations. Okay, so let's first look at the flat roof snow load. That's, this is our first quantity that we need to be aware of when calculating snow load. So flat roof snow load. Well, what is the flat roof snow load? Well, we have a formula here, and this is PF equals 0 0.7 times our coefficient CE times our coefficient CT times IS uh, times PG. Lovely, nice and simple. Anyway, uh, so we, a few of these things, well, one of these things we already know, IS is our importance factor, specifically the importance factor for our building type for snow. And if you want to learn more about that, you can check out the previous uh, video in this uh, playlist. Okay, so we have the importance factor, so see the previous lecture, PG. This is our basic ground level uh, snow value, or ground level snow load. And this is in pounds per square foot. Now, um, let's see, this is sort of, th now this basically, uh, this PG is, a, is an environmental criteria. What I mean by that is, this is just this is looking at just the area the location so there are maps in asc7 in fact let me pull these up um you'll get these from uh let's see tables four three not four three let's pull that up just a second back up that table value let's just go and pull up chapter seven so to find the relevant table Let's just go here, and we'll go down to chapter seven. Oops, oh, you can't hear me. All right, to get our, to get our uh, snow load, our base value, let's go down to chapter seven. Um, let's see, what chapter are we here? Oh, that's a little too far. All right, so here we are. The ground level, the ground snow uh, loads for selected locations uh, in various states. Now where you're going to start is when getting the ground snow level, uh, you're going to want to start at figure uh, 7.2-1 here. And this basically lays out, this is sort of a top uh, topographical or um, elevation, not really elevation, it's more, it's a combination of topography and climate. And these essentially represent, this graph essentially represents your base ground level snow, uh, snow load, uh, based on a 2% uh, probability of exceedance. So, for example, if you're in Iowa here on Des Moines, Des Moines are right about there-ish, um, if you're looking at Des Moines, for example, uh, your base snow level is going to be uh, 25 uh, PSF. And so think about that. Now, that, that doesn't seem like a lot, but then think about what, uh, think about what that represents in terms of actual snow. A uh, snow is much, much less dense than water. There's an old rule of thumb is that, which I don't know how, I can't really vouch on, it's 
true scientific accuracy, but there's no rule of thumb that says uh, an inch of rain makes a foot of snow. But uh, so you're not talking about, um, so even, uh, so if you think about, um, so if that rule did apply, 25, that's about half of 60.4, which is the weight of one cubic foot of water. So I don't know, you're still talking about uh, uh, several feet of snow for that 25 PSF. That's quite a bit. So uh, it may not look like a large value, 25 PSF here, but it actually is a decently large value. So you're going to get your base, uh, your base ground level snow value, your PG, from this table, or from this uh, figure 7.2-1, unless you're in one of a few states. So for example, certain states have particular um, have particular uh, notations. So like, for example, where I am right now, Oregon, uh, Oregon's one of those special states that gets its, gets its own special provisions. And these tend to be states that have a lot of mountainous terrain, a lot of elevations and things, because uh, if you live in a state with more with a lot of topography variations and elevation, you'll know that uh, snow load can vary dramatically based on the uh, based on the elevation. So we, so if you're dealing with something like Oregon, I want to scroll down to the uh, table that deals just with Oregon. Where's Idaho? Oh, where is my Oregon? Oh, here we go. Uh, select locations in Oregon. Well, how convenient. I am actually in Corvallis. I live in Corvallis. And the ground level snow load is 14 PSF. Now, notice here this table, all these tables have, and some of the other graphs, they have reference elevations. And that is because, uh, you know, a city like Corvallis has quite a lot of, depends what part of town you're in, like most of the town is on the valley floor, but if you start going up into the, in some of the areas of the city, you can start going up into the hills a bit, and you actually end up getting quite a lot of elevation change. And so notice they list an, a reference elevation. And what that means is that this is taken as sort of like a, they consider this a conservative value for most of the city of Corvallis. And but they have to, they're basically using a reference elevation of 230 feet. But if you're, so if you're dealing with anything below that elevation, you're going to be fine. However, if you're uh, in Corvallis and you're dealing with a elevation above there, then you need to consult, uh, usually, actually, if you read the language of the AC7, they um, punt to the local building authorities, the local uh, planning boards and such, and they say you have to see what they say. Or if you didn't have any such guidance, if you were building out in the countryside somewhere without a lot of um, guidance, then... Uh, you would have to use your best engineering judgment, um, maybe find a nearby city with similar elevations, uh, etc. But there, and when when in doubt, uh, be conservative when calculating your snow load or any type of load, really. And so, yeah, so basically, if you're in the city proper, in, if you're actually in one of the cities that is listed here, that's fine. You can just use that. Otherwise, if that's not uh, practical, if you're not able to do that, then you can find a nearby city. Uh, or you can use other methods uh, that your local um, that your local building uh, regulator prescribes. So the key thing again is though, you either look at the map, the main 7.2-1 figure um, for national level values, or you look at, uh, if you're living in a state that has a lot of elevation changes, then you can look at the given, um, the given tables here and find a city that you're actually working in or find a, um, or maybe if you're in a small town, for example, if you are in, um, let's see, um, yeah, Philomath, uh, Philomath, it is a small town just to the west of Corvallis. It's not listed on here. However, it is very similar. It might be a little bit different in elevation slightly, but its elevation is pretty similar to Corvallis. So when in doubt, I could probably use the values for Corvallis if I was designing something in Philomath. So um, that's the basic idea here. It provides they can't, you know, in a state, there's going to be hundreds, actually thousands of different municipalities. So they can't possibly list all of them. So they provide sort of standard, um, they provide the biggest cities and also they provide reference elevations. And, um, and again, these values and then uh, ground level snow load values, which again are based on a 2% probability of annual exceedance. Okay, so that's our PG. All right, so let's go back to the board. Um, okay, so we've talked about PG. That is, again, the pounds per square foot, ground level snow. And let's see. Um, so again, you uh, find the value in the, in the uh, 
7.2-1 in the uh, map, or if you're in one of the special states, then you look at the table and find either the exact city that you're working in um, or the or a uh, similar a similarly applicable city and you watch out on your elevation to make sure that you're not exceeding the reference elevation. In fact, I'll put that as a note here. Do not exceed reference elevation. So that reference elevation is an upper bound. Um, if you're at that or below that, you're gonna be fine because that's gonna be a conservative value. But if you are at, say like uh, in a very exceptionally tall hill in the middle of one of these cities, then um, your, and your elevation is above the reference elevation, then you, then you are not, uh, no longer necessarily using a properly conservative value. Okay. Then there are some other things, um, some other factors that we need to consider. So we've looked at the, we have our base value and now we need to modify it according to the other equations. So we got IS, that's the uh, importance factor. We have PG, that is our base ground level snow. Then we just need to consider CE and CT. So CE, well, in many cases it would stand for civil engineering. In this case, it is the exposure factor. And this, as you uh, might not be surprised to know, relates to the exposure factor of, or the exposure category of the building. And this is found in table uh, 7.3-1. Okay, so let's go back to that. And actually, let me give you a few values first to just give you an idea of some of the range and some of the variables that are consider considered in this. If you have a, a fully exposed roof, on a smooth but with a smooth surface your CE value is going to be uh, let's see that's going to be 0 0.7 so in other words think about how we're going to use this number we're going to multiply the uh, snow the ground level snow load by this so the smaller this number is the smaller our final PF which is our flat uh, roof snow load or flat, or the snow load that appears on a flat that is applied to a, a flat roof. So that's uh, so the smaller this number, the smaller the ultimate snow load. So if you have an exposed roof with a smooth surface, well, the smoother it is, the easier it's going to be for snow to slide off the roof. And then exposed, the easier it is for, uh, if you have a, a very exposed roof, it's going to be much easier for uh, snow to be blown off of it instead of remaining on the roof. And once it blows off, it won't tend to blow back on. So um, there. And then also, so that will, both of those will result in lower amounts of overall snow accumulating on the roof. And then you also have, and then on the other extreme, you have a sheltered roof. So lots of, so if you say you're, a, say you're a small house, like a one story house surrounded by three story houses, that would be a sheltered roof. So sheltered with a rough surface, In that case, your factor would be 1.2. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, standard and we'll go back to the ASD and we'll take a look at the table 7.3-1 uh, to get a bigger, better feel for this. Okay. Okay, so let's go up to 7.3-1 in ASC 7. And here we have, here it is, right here, the exposure factors. So there are different surface, oh, if I could scroll down here. There are different surface reference categories I don't necessarily want to go into in this particular calculation, in this particular uh, discussion here, because that's another whole, whole other kettle of fish. But um, based, and there are, if you're looking for more precise definitions of what fully, partially, and sheltered mean. Um, you can look up, look those up in the provisions, in the ASC 7 provisions. And uh, I just wanted to introduce them here, but you, you of course can go into them at much greater depth if you're curious about what exactly those um, definitions entail. There are detailed definitions laid out in the specification. Okay, so generally, though what we can see from this is that the rougher the surface, um, 
the higher the surface roughness category. So B is going to be a lot smoother than D, or actually other way around, sorry. The uh, smoother the roof, the, uh, the smoother the roof, the uh, more easily snow will leave its surface. So, so a D has to be smoother than B, um, just considering how those numbers work out. And then of course, the more sheltered you are, the more, the more sheltered your roof is, the more easily it will carry, uh, it will hold snow load. Okay, so next we need to look at another, so that's a brief introduction to CE. And there's one other factor we need to look at, which is the CT value, which I want to explore on the board first. Actually, actually, I can probably squeeze it down here. Yeah, I think I can do that. So CT, let's get talk about CT. CT is going to be a thermal factor. It, re it relates to how warm your building is. Uh, thermal factor. And this is ASCE table, uh, this is the table that, this is the uh, CT table, CCT, C, the 7.3-2, I believe, in ASC 7. And um, most of the time it's going to be equal to 1, except in very unusual cases. But there are cases where it's not. Um, basically, it increases... It increases or decreases for, I would say, rare buildings. And let's take a look at that. So let's go back to the ASC 7 and take a look. So taking a look at this, if we go to 7.3-2, we can see our thermal factor. So you can see that most structures here have a CT value of 1.0. However, some are, uh, if, if some are uh, kept, for example, structures kept just abo above freezing and others with cold ventilated roofs, um, then you have a slightly higher uh, CT value. Or another example would be a freezer building. So if, uh, an example of that would be like a, uh, there are certain warehouses that are, that uh, rather than having there are certain large warehouses that grocery stores and uh, and other stores have that rather than um, having a ton of small freezers inside a, a large warehouse, it's just more efficient just to uh, have a Mondo air conditioning system and just air condition the entire building to the, put to the point where the, the entire building is effectively a giant walk-in freezer. And so everybody working in that warehouse, in such a warehouse, has to wear like, uh, you know, winter coats and such, even in the summertime. But... Because of that, any building like that is going to, um, the colder a building is, the, um, the less it's going to readily melt snow on its roof. And so you can get deeper snow accumulations because of that. So because of that, uh, if you have buildings that are either unheated or kept just above freezing or even a freezer building, you'll get more snow accumulations. So you have to take a penalty for that in your uh, CT value. Okay, so we have basically, so let's go back to the board. All right, so we've learned, uh, we've now looked at all the components of our, um, of our basic uh, uh, flat roof snow uh, load. We've seen, we, we saw the importance factor in the previous video. We've seen how to get the basic ground level snow value uh, from the relevant tables and charts. And we've explored CE and CT. So and essentially now we have everything we need to calculate the, uh, the values of our basic flat roof snow load. Okay, so let's go ahead and let me erase this. And then we'll look at uh, some, so for flat roofs, this, is, this PF value is referred to as the flat roof um, snow load. And it literally is the value for a flat roof. Now, if you have, now of course most roofs, at least like things like residential buildings and such, they do not have flat roofs, so you have to have some way of taking that into account. Um, obviously, a roof that if think about it, if a roof has a very steep slope, most of the snow is going to tend just to slide right off of it rather than accumulating in great big heaps. So, um, a, a flat roof will most readily carry snow, but there, we have to have some method of reducing or calculating that, 
calculating adjusted value for roofs that have an actual slope or a substantial slope. So for roofs that are 5% or less, you can just use the flat roof snow value just as a design value. So uh, if your roof is very, is almost flat, if it has a 5%, if it has a 5% slope or less, you can just go through this calculation once and uh, calculate the snow load like that and apply it directly to the roof. However, of course, if you have any um, if you have any kind of roof slope, then you're going to need to if you have any kind of sloped roof, then you're going to need to apply these other equations that we're looking at uh, as soon as I wipe this board down. So again, we have the value for our flat root. We have the process um, to get our flat roof value. Um, the flat roof value is based on, again, it's based on um, taking the basic environmental ground level load, which is based on a 2% exceedance probability, and then um, multiplying factors for that take into account exposure, roof roughness, and uh, any kind of thermal uh, load from the building. All right, so this is gonna be a bit longer of a video than our importance, uh, than one of our previous ones, the importance category, but that's okay. Something, something, pandemic, lock-in, something, something. Okay, so we've looked at flat roofs and we, uh, once you have the flat roof value, then you use that flat roof value as an input when calculating um, the values for a sloped roof. So there's two things. Um, let's see. So again, we've seen how to handle flat roofs again, which is a, in fact, I'll just write this out explicitly. Flat roofs, a uh, slope less than 5%. Uh, you can just use PF directly. But what about sloped roofs? Um, for sloped roofs, we will apply the following equation. Well, we have PS for P slope, distributed uh, area load for slope is going to be equal to CS times PF. And this is the exact same PF value we previously calculated for a sloped roof. So the basic idea of the snow load is that, of the snow load calculation, is that we go and uh, calculate the value for a flat roof and then adjust it using some modification factors, well, a modification factor, to consider the actual slope of whatever roof we're dealing with. Okay, and this, um, this p that so all we need to really do is figure out the cs value and the cs value depends is actually a function on the previously determined ct value so it ha there are a series of charts in the asc7 and based on what your pre what value of ct you got uh, you will apply a different uh you will look at a different portion of the chart or a different chart so if you have what's known as a warm roof which is one where CT is less than or equal to 1.0, you're gonna be applying a table or figure, uh, it's, it's going to be 7 2A, figure 72A. If you're looking at a, what's known as a, and then there's two, there are two types of cold roofs that the, two, uh, the, the ASC7 uses the term cold roof, but there are two types of cold roof within this. Ignore the labels, they're not terribly important. What is important is the CT value. If CT is equal to 1.1, we use 72B. And don't worry too much about writing this down because it is shown right on the table what you use. Uh, and then if CT is greater than or equal to 1.2, write the greater than or equal to symbol properly, 
greater than or equal to 1.2, then you use 7-3b. Uh, or 7-2. C, I believe. I'll need to check those references. Let me just. But anyway, because we're gonna go, because because we're gonna go right to the uh, code anyway to take a look at these. So let's go here. Where is that table? Ah, here we are. Ah, yes, 7-2a, b, and c. Okay, got those. So we have 7-2a, b, and c, and notice what we have here. Uh, we essentially have a figure that is just a graph of roof slope, roof slope versus our CS value. And you have, um, you have one plot for unobstructed slippery surfaces. So that was, so a slippery surface would be something like a glass roof, um, most of your uh, most of your roofing surfaces are not going to be slippery surfaces, um, and unobstructed means there's not something that's going to prevent on a given roof slope. There's not something that's going to prevent uh, snow from sliding down it. So, for example, if there's a if there's a large protuberance, so if there's like a big HVAC unit on top of a commercial roof or something, that would be something that could obstruct the uh, the flow of uh, snow off of a roof. But, um, and so you have to, you have different CS factors depending on this. So really it's, I think it's, this is fairly straightforward. You get your C, you first determine your CT value. Um, as you, when you were calculating the PF value, the uh, flat roof snow load, if it's less than or equal to one, you use this chart. If it's equal to 1.1, you use this chart. And if it's 1.2 or larger, you use this one. Now, at first it may seem strange. Why would you, what if, what if you have like 1.05 or something but since the CT values are ultimately de uh, determined from a table, they you should just not end up with anything. You should just shouldn't end up with a 1.05. That shouldn't be possible if you're getting these values from uh, the relevant table. And then uh, you so you get your so based on these you get your CS values, and oh uh, that's fairly it. So you get your CS values. Uh, let's go back to this. So. Again, you get your CS value. Again, you get your CS value, which is based on uh, CT and the relevant um, slope in relevant table, or relevant chart, I should say. And you just go ahead and calculate it, and then you get your PS, and it's just fairly, and it's very straightforward. It's literally just CS times your previously calculated PF. Okay, so uh, so we have we've now learned how to calculate the uh, snow load on a single on a flat roof or a sloped roof. So in other words, if we have a flat roof, a flat roof building, or a building with simple slopes just something like this. And that's how we calculate it. If we're, use, we, if we're having a flat roof, we just use our PF value. And if we have a sloped roof, we use our PS value. However, this doesn't include uh, a lot of other things, which I want to um, note. There's a few other provisions, and I also want to list some caveats about what this does and does not cover. Again, we've we're only we've only looked at very simple. Uh, we've only considered the simplest of cases. We've only considered flat roofs and roofs with just a single overall slope, or at least uh, you know a roof with two slopes like that. But uh, assuming they were just uh, you know one continuous slope on each side, you could use that calculation. But if you start having lots of uh, troughs and gutters and all sorts of valleys and hips and things with more, especially with more complex roofs, you start getting into some very interesting uh, provisions, which there are actually quite a bit of them in ASC 7. And I'm not going to have time to go through all of them, but I do, I will just give some caveats about what you need to be, some things you need to be aware of. All right. 
So, um, one other thing I want to list, since we did cover, since we are, I want this video to cover basic uh, slope calculations or basic uh, uniform load calculations. One thing uh, you need to be aware of is the low slope roof provision. Now, um, let's see. Basically, this applies to a, there is a, um, for low slope roofs, Uh, typically less than 15% slope. Although you should read the language in there to be uh, to be sure. There's it it varies slightly based on the type of roof you're using, but generally less than 15%. Um, there is a minimum snow load you need to apply, and so min snow load. So if you have a flat roof, um, and if PG is less than or equal to 20 pounds per foot, or per, per square foot, I should say, then the minimum snow load, PM, is just going to be equal to IS uh, times PG, where IS is your importance factor. So um, basically this is just saying that regardless of what the, uh, sometimes the charts can produce um, a bit weird results depending, well not weird, but uh, Sometimes you'll end up with numbers that uh, are below a minimum safe value. And so um, uh, based on like signs and cosines used to calculate the various, um, the various uh, values in those charts. And so the code says, or the ASC specification says, uh, you know what, regardless of what the previous math says, we're going to put a minimum on it. You have to design your roof for at least this value. So, if, so the way this works again is you first check if your roof slope is less than 15%. If it's not, don't worry about this. If it is, then you go to another if statement, sort of. If your base ground level snow is less than 20, less than or equal to 20, your minimum value is the importance factor times the ground snow level, ground snow amount. And then if uh, PG is greater than 20, the base if the base snow level is greater than or equal to 20, PSF, then it's equal to, then the minimum snow load that you're going to apply is equal to uh, 20 times the importance factor uh, minus 20. Or actually not, sorry, not 20 minus I, it's just 20 times IS, sorry about that. In other words, this is 20, uh, this is in PSF, So you literally just multiply uh, 20 PSF times the importance factor. So if you, uh, again, if you are, um, if your base ground level snow load and base, you know, 2% uh, exceedance is below uh, 20 pounds per square foot, you just multiply IS times your uh, ground level snow load, and that's your minimum that you can't, uh, that you can't go under in design. So you have to design it for at least this. And if your base ground level snow load is above 20, you, your minimum level is just 20 times the importance factor. Okay, so that is something, again, you only need to apply that if the slope is less than 15%, but the code does put some minimum values on there that you'll need to be aware of. Okay, and finally, one other thing I'd like to note about these values is how they're actually applied. So um, you run into the problem of trigonometry and slopes here a bit, in that these are based on projected area. Uh, these values uh, based on projected area. What I mean by that is if you have a roof slope like this and um, say you calculate a certain P uh, S for, uh, for P S if you think about it, the slope, the, the area of the roof along this plane here is less than the area along this plane here. So the horizontal plane has less area than the slope plane. That's just 
basic trigonometry. So, um, but these values are based on the projected area. So if you want, so this is basically, if this is, this, if this is PF, this is projected downward. So if you want, if you wanted to calculate the, uh, if you wanted to calculate the load along this plane, that would still be acting downward, but the, oh, if you wanted to calculate a, a pounds per foot, a W along this plane, you would have to apply, uh, let's see, what would that be? If this is your theta, what would that be? That would be a, just over it, okay, that'd be a cosine, yeah. So you'd probably do something like uh, multiply by the cosine of theta or something similar. You have to you have to apply a little trigonometry. Um, actually, I actually need to think about that a little bit, um, but you need to apply a little trigonometry in order to get that. Again, this is just a quick warning. These are projected values. For very shallow roofs, it's not going to matter, but for uh, larger roofs, for more steep roofs, it's going, it would, it would of course, uh, actually matter. So, in other words, when it's zero, this should be equal to this. So yeah, that should probably be something like um, PF, uh, maybe on a slope. Would be if you're if you want the uh, weight per foot along the plane of the roof, that would be something like PF cosine theta, I believe. Although, run your uh, numbers to confirm. Okay. All right, that'll do it for now. I do want to put out a video later covering um, covering uh, drifting if I can. But this was just going. This was just to serve as a brief introduction to snow load, covering uh, load in the case in uniform load cases, looking at both sloped and flat roofs. All right, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. That'll do it for now. And as always, thank you.